All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to today's training industry leader talk on digital transformation and the future of work. We have reached our last but certainly not least session of the day. Once again, I'd like to, like to thank our sponsors and our speakers today who have delivered some top-notch content throughout the day. SAP Litmos, GP Strategies, Get Control, Biz Library, and coming up, Sounding Board. For anyone who may just be tuning in, just a few housekeeping items from me. Throughout the session, feel free to use the chat window to interact with other attendees or to chat with myself and other panelists. Be sure to direct your questions for our speaker in your Q&A window. We will have time at the end of the session to address any other questions. And of course, I encourage you to share the information you receive on social media by following our handle and using it in your posts which is training industry without the why. At the end of your time with us, you'll see that a short evaluation survey has popped open in your browser. We greatly appreciate your thoughts on today's event. And finally, all of our sessions have been recorded today and they will be archived on trainingindustry.com so you can go back and watch anything you might have missed. We'll be sending you an email tomorrow with links to those on-demand sessions and resources from our sponsors so you can review them and share with your team. If this is your first event with Training Industry, a special welcome goes out to you. Our goal at Training Industry is to connect you with the insights, resources, and solutions you need to be an impactful learning and development professional. We offer over 100 live and virtual events like today's conference every year on any topic relevant to your role. Find upcoming events and other free resources by visiting our website, trainingindustry.com. Now, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Sounding Board, before we get started. And here is a brief video from them. Sounding Board is a scalable leadership development platform, combining technology and leadership coaching to drive business impact for global enterprises. Our coach management system helps you accelerate the development of your leaders with a globally managed, fully vetted network of world-class coaches. Our integrated technology platform is designed to lift administrative burden and make leadership coaching manageable, measurable, and scalable. Learn more at www.soundingboardinc.com. All right, and with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to our speaker, Iyad Yakub. Iyad leads behavioral science at Sounding Board. His mission is to connect science to practice and tell evidence-based stories to fuel the company's ongoing growth. He led learning and development and people programs for three multi-billion dollar tech startups and designed nationally recognized coaching and data insights interventions at Stanford, Purdue, and the United Nations. He did his master's and doctoral research in organizational behavior, management, and psychology at Purdue University of South Florida and Harvard. Iyad is also a fellow at Harvard Institute of Coaching, a Fulbright Scholar, and a certified coach. Iyad, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Really looking forward for all that you have in store. So I am going to let you take it from here. Awesome. Thank you so much for this introduction. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining this session. I know uh, some of you have been attending uh, other sessions. So I'll try my best to not overwhelm you with information, but more as a conversation instead of me talking at you, we'll try to have it as we talk with each other to solve for better workplaces and better workforce for the future. So with that, uh, if you allow me, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And yeah, I want to continue, so I'm gonna go ahead and share. Do you see my screen? We can see it. Awesome, all right. So today's topic is don't prepare leaders for the future. It's already happening. And I have two agenda items. I believe that less is more. And this is going to be a common theme uh, today, that less is more 
in today's workplace and for the future as well. Um, so two agenda items, basically, why do leadership coaching, the future workforce and digital transformation matter for you? And what is the connection between them? Can these three dynamic concepts accelerate future workforce, for workforce growth? So with that, let's start. And as I promised, it's going to be more as a conversation instead of a, a presentation. So if you can go to menti.com and use this code, 89646691, and I'm going to put it in the chat as well. So menti.com and... Eight nine six four six six nine one, and we're gonna go and have some fun there. All right, let's see. So stop sharing, and I'm gonna go and share here. Okay, do you see my screen now? All right. So the first question is, how are you feeling? How are you feeling right now? So let's see. We're excited myself and also curious. I would like to know about you. It takes usually a 30 seconds to 45 seconds based on my experience to see the first response. Hey, let's test it about myself. All right, here you go. <laughs> All right, excited, tired, oh, of course. Full brain, nervous, oh, optimistic. Cool, cool. Fairly content, stressed. All right, excited. So, you know, the size of the word represents the number of entries. So I see excited, happy, curious, hopeful, good, tired too. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah. Keep, keep them coming. Next one, how do you like to show up today? So give yourself 10 seconds to recenter, recharge, refuel, and set one intention. How do I want to show up for this presentation for myself? Chocolate. <laughs> I, have, I have a guess that Olivier from Belgium who <laughs> mentioned that, maybe. <laughs> He was writing in the chat that he's going to bring his hot chocolate. Right, present, engaged, engaged, curious, amazing, amazing. Congratulations on this intention. Beautiful. And next one. What's one thing you would like to get out of this conversation? One thing. Again, less is more. What is one thing if you get out, get out of this conversation, you would be happy, content, excited. You say, that was like a good 30 minutes. I spent a good 30 minutes on something I learned something new or validated my learning or something that I was thinking about and now I have more data to support. The new ideas, pre, pre present, actionable plan, direction. Okay, so more on the action side, on the how. Practical ideas, all right, all right. Happy, vision, new idea, perspective. Okay, so I, I see two common themes, uh, ideas and action. Let's put it this way. All right. One more question, I promise. Uh, which one do you feel you know more about? So we have three overarching concepts for today, digital transformation, leadership coaching, and future workforce. So say, I know more about digital transformation. I know more about future workforce, a lot about all of them, or consider me as a beginner all right, let's see here. So the numbers represent the uh, percentage of people who uh, answers uh, who answer these questions. Okay, let's see here. Nice, nice. Cool. So I would say, you know, uh, leadership coaching. People know a lot about leadership coaching here. So a lot, I would say. Yeah, that's a good number. And a lot of people say, you know what? Consider me as a beginner. Um, awesome. All right. So thank you, Menti. And thank you for those who uh, interacted. I hope this is uh, a fun exercise. And let me see here. Let's go back to the presentation. All right. Do you see my screen here? All right. Cool. 
so you see the slides. Awesome. So let's start with why do leadership coaching, the future workforce, and digital transformation matter for you? So here where we're going to focus on insights. So let's start with what is leadership coaching? Now at Sounding Board, we have a definition for leadership coaching. We think leadership coaching is a highly personalized form of professional leadership development uh, using an action-oriented approach. So very action-oriented. At the same time, it, it, it engages participants to increase self-awareness, generates insights uh, that could lead to uh, lasting mindset and behavioral shifts. So instead of focusing on transactional tasks and behaviors, we focus on mindsets before insights after insights and this shift in perspectives would lead to those behaviors that we uh, want to see in the workplace uh, so coaches may use a combination of questions tools and frameworks and content to personalize the learning experience for each participant so the question might kind of basically you have in mind is what is the difference between leadership coaching and coaching or what is the difference well leadership coaching at the context, the container of the conversation is about, about leadership capabilities. And we're going to talk about more, more about that. So some maybe historical, uh, you know, walkthrough. So coaching is not a new concept. Maybe the word is, but not the concept itself. Socrates, back in the day, he was using a lot of uh, techniques in communications when, when he was communicating with his students and, and followers and apprentices and, and kind of all these people who, who impacted, he was using questions. He was uh, challenging people instead of telling them things as they are, he was tapping into their curiosity and uh, inquiry and all these skills that high level of executive functions. Now, fast forward thousands of years, coaching in the early 90s, we started to see the actual term uh, being used in the workplace. And the focus was on performance management. How can we, how, how we can per correct performance? How can, how can uh, uh, leaders and organizational uh, talent leaders help people who are low performers to whether behavior or performance to kind of increase, increase their impact in the organization? Then, 10 years, 15 years after that, we see more like the concept of leader as coach and where leaders and managers can use skills uh, to uh, impact their direct reports and teams, called that coaching 2.0, and using also external and internal coaching. Now, the focus since the 2000s, 10s, like the last 15 years, I would say, especially recently, was more on the combination of performance and well-being. So instead of seeing what performance and well-being as you know two separate uh, outcomes, we see them as mutually inclusive that they can lead to each other. Performance is a human need, and well-being is the overarching concept that integrates all the human needs together. So instead of seeing them as should I focus on this or that, you focus on both, and the driver is leadership development. So. With that, from a behavioral science perspective, my angle as sounding board and how we solve for leadership development, we try to borrow and learn from different sciences, psychology, neuroscience, and specific psychology fields like developmental psychology or neuropsychology or social psychology, and all these together uh, to, to integrate them together as a behavioral science field at sounding board and to focus specifically on leadership development and learning together. Uh, learning theories, as you know, you have like pedagogy and you have uh, andragogy. The, what we focus on, on more self-directed learning, uh, it's like the, the, pretty much is a kind of concept of how people can learn uh, using intrinsic motivation. And this is where basically the overlap leadership coaching in the workplace. So how coaching is different from other interventions, and a lot of you already know these stuff, but it doesn't uh, hurt if we just kind of quickly align and, and level set. It's like adding value fast. So this is uh, where we can assess that value per minute and keep your client the center of the, of the conversation. 
Now, leadership coaching adding adds the organization as a center of the conversation as well. So this is like one of the main differences between coaching and leadership coaching is the organizational layer. Now, how is it different from other interventions like mentoring, training, uh, organizational design, and all these things? Basically, coaching is indirectional for the most part. And I say for the most part because sometimes you have adaptive coaching model, uh, more focusing on the asking and discovery and development. Again, focus on the mindset and putting your client at the center of the conversation and focusing on motivation and capabilities. Now, other interventions don't necessarily do that. It could be, it could be not necessarily they don't do it, but for the most part, they focus on telling, sharing, and showing, like mentoring, right? Uh, knowledge and skills and experience, and less about insights, motivation, and capabilities. So again, back to the context, we're talking about today, scalable technology, organizational leadership, and workplace coaching. And this is the type of coaching we're talking about today. And from an impact perspective, how can leadership coaching actually change the organization is basically think about it as an independent variable back to your statistics and uh, quantitative analysis classes. If you remember, it's, we have independent variables and dependent variables on the left. The more we, we, we uh, understand the relationship between the two, the more we are intentional about how much coaching we need in the workplace and how coaching interacts with other interventions of learning and development. So this is one of the uh, ways to think about measuring the impact of coaching. This is a, from a science perspective, behavioral science perspective. So I collected several studies, 37 studies and 5,570 participants from those studies. And uh, we've seen meta-analysis, like from a meta-analysis perspective, that coaching impact performance by 60%. Now, not any coaching. We're talking about workplace coaching, leadership development that focuses on the organizational context. We're talking about impacting the coping, adaptability, resilience, right? We're talking about self-regulation. Self-regulation is one of the most important concepts right now as an umbrella concept for uh, grit, growth mindset, uh, delayed gratification, self-control, willpower, all these things under self-regulation umbrella. And then we're talking about well-being as we talked about, well-being as positive emotions and beyond just happiness. We're talking about meaning and psychological uh, richness and all these concepts and attitudes, how you approach workplace uh, today, engagement, uh, interaction, communication, conflict resolution. So you see the impact is significantly high based on several studies, not one or two studies, talking about 37 studies. And this is not everything. This is a, a sample of, of study. You can see also how coaching can work with training. So my concept basically it's not coaching over training, although I feel that if you want to invest in one solution, coaching in the workplace, specifically focusing on leadership, is the most impactful. However, I think you can have an ecosystem of learning interventions where coaching can interact with other um, uh, engagements or uh, other interventions like training. So the research is telling us that can basically training can impact performance by 22%. However, if you combine training with coaching, you can up-level your leadership and development gain up to 88% impact. And you see performance actually significantly goes, goes higher. Okay, now moving forward, the business case, not the science case, which is basically how are, how are we going to measure when we go to head of people or business leaders or executive team and trying to tell a story about the impact and try to sell coaching within the company. Think about there are activities, output, outcomes, and impact. This model is well known within international organizations like the United Nations, where they focus on the logical framework they call it, and they want to understand the impact of the work. Of course, you can measure that in different ways. You are familiar with Kirkpatrick model, but there are other ways more scientifically robust, like uh, random, uh, randomized uh, samples and you have like an intervention group and, and a control group and see the impact on each, uh, each one of them. But the simple way is just focus on what I'm doing, what is the prerequisite, engaged, coachable, 
uh, workforce. I need to match a coach with a coachee. These are samples of what an input could be. The output would be the goals, the insight, the capabilities. These are the things I'm going to measure as a, like a dashboard. Now, you can match this and use them as moderators or mediators to measure more uh, profound business outcomes and things that you actually really care about in the organization um, on a higher level, like a, a level one metrics. So productivity, resilience, and collaboration on an individual and team level. And that will actually, you can measure it as effectiveness and efficiency, even inclusion as an organizational level or a higher functional level. Now, think about, before we move, we move to this slide, any questions, anything that you feel so far has kind of, you know, not clear or think that you can feel like, yeah, this is where I kind of feel yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's move forward. So we're, when we talk about future of work, mainly we're talking about the what, the who, and the where. So the what is the work itself, right? How the work is done and the who, who does the work, workforce, right? And we're talking about the when and where, which is the physical environment, virtual environment, hybrid environment. How is it, how is that gonna look like in the future? So think about also history and how involvement of, of a work, the actual work and workplace and workforce evolved over time. When we used to talk about the first industrial revolution, and then we moved to 2.0 where we the focus on electricity and production factories. Then the, uh, the 1960s when we had the transistors and computers and automation. Then we moved to kind of technology, data, connectivity, uh, and all these things that can help, that helped us basically have a new work environment. The future is all about mass customization, personalization, the line is being blurred between physical and virtual environments. So think about kind of how this context and how this uh, environment actually changing over time and how that's going to impact the uh, type of, of, of communications we have in the workplace. Now think also about Think about the future of human work. Now, we talked about the future is being more, you know, personalized, right? And the line is being blurred. Now, think about, we all talk about AI and how AI is going to replace tasks, not humans, because humans will always be here. So, think about the interaction between human intelligence and artificial intelligence, AI and HI, and how AI is taken over more and more uh, of the task that requires more routine, procedural, standardized, repetitive uh, uh, skills, and that will give humans the opportunity to be more curious and empathetic and use those skills uh, that think that machines cannot, or at least in the foreseeable future, we, we don't see that they will, will replace human tasks this way. Now, I think also about the disruptors. We have different disruptors, not only technology as one dimensional disruptor, but we have different ways to think about disruptors from a technology perspective. We have, we have the change in technology, the smartphones, and how people actually use their smartphones as the ultimate device and the ultimate companion to do most of the tasks of today's work. They also think about the data and the, 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 exponential growth of data every single day, every single week, and how that also impacting the future of workforce. Without going through all of them, think about kind of how these disruptors interact with humans, but also how they interact with each other and how this inter creating interaction, creating a diversity and generational change. We used to talk about millennials. Today, we're talking about a new generation. We're talking about Generation Z. And this is where we... we Think about Generation Z as the uh, future generation. Back to the main theme of the conversation today, they are in the workplace already. They're not entering the workplace. They already entered the workplace. If you see a study by uh, maybe Deloitte, but I think they talked about that Generation Z entered the workforce uh, before we started to talk about Generation Z. And if you think it depends on the study you, you're citing, but a lot of studies 
today's Generation Z, those who start who were born after 1995. So by by today, they're like 27, right? So think about like 27, they already have like a three to five years of experience. We're talking about generation that's already interacting with the workforce. So here are some, some measurements. Think about this generation, how, how they're going to grow in the workplace and what they really care about. Now, there are different ways to think about generations. I invite you to think about generation beyond their birth date or when they were born and think about their common themes and common perspectives and life views and shared values and how they grew up and who they saw as role models and how that impacting their perspective about life. Mainly Generation Z are, Zers are the children of Gen Xers. So this generation actually saw their parents losing their jobs in 2008. They saw social injustice. They saw different, different you know, uh, world, world pr problems like refugees and they see how women rights and they see how that kind of this dynamics happening in this world. Now, this study, I'm not sure, and so I cannot speak out of no understanding of what is happening. So I'm not sure if this is a global study or the U.S. study. My assumption, this is a global study. But think about what kind of these percentages. And one of the things that more and more about this is security and stability really matters to Generation Z. Again, back to the, the assumptions and role models they saw in early age. And last thing is about technology milestone. We think about Generation Z as like smartphone or I, I generation, they call them. In reality, they're moving, moving toward more uh, artificial, uh, more augmented reality and virtual reality. And there's a reason for that. Maybe if you can put in the chat, why this shift and migration and right now we see in the workplace toward augmented reality and, and uh, virtual, uh, virtual reality? It could go back to actually one of the misconceptions about this generation that they value high tech. In reality, they don't focus on high tech. They focus on high touch. And this generation really cares about personal connection. The way they define personal connection is actually through FaceTime using technology. So technology for them is not a goal, but more a medium to boost the human connection. All right, with that, let's move to the how. How can these dynamic concepts accelerate future workforce growth? Workforce growth. Before we go there, any questions, any comments in the chat? Would love to hear what, what you have in mind so far, based on what we talked so far. Yeah, thank you, Olivier. Thank. At the same, at the same time, young people are not the enjoy with metaverse. That's actually really, really uh, profound. Yes, they're they're. Uh, they're afraid that they would be sucked in into a new world that may not see an exit from. So a lot of research right now, studies talking about the danger of that, but at the same time, at the same time, the opportunities. So we'll see how that's going to go, but it's going to be driven by this generation for sure. Now, maybe question for you uh, in the call, but what is the generation that comes after generation? Think about who, who would be this generation. So I have a, a nine-year-old and I have, yeah, that's right, Gen Alpha. You're right. What they call them Gen Alpha or because we are done with the letters, but also this, this generation, the word Alpha might represent them really well. They're the kids of millennials. And um, for the millennials on the call, millennial parents, think about your kids and how their behaviors are different from their older siblings or, uh, or Gen Zers. So uh, yeah, I have a two-year-old right now who thinks everything in the world is touch screen, 100% digital native. Uh, they interact with more confidence and they have a new way. Not a lot of research about Gen Alpha, but this generation more, most likely is gonna be the generation who's not gonna drive in college, right? They can use autonomous driving or they, life is gonna be very AI for them. So very, very interesting research about this. Now, moving forward, the way we, I think about interaction, think about it as a hypothesis, think about humanizing and optimizing, call it H2O. So let's start with the hypothesis here. The hypothesis is that people-centered 
human-centered, agile, which means moving at the speed of change or even faster, technology-enabled leadership development can humanize and optimize multi-generational workplaces. Because the, the reality is we have five generations in the workplace and the number is not going to go down. So like you're always going to have five generations in the workplace. And this means that different perspectives, different uh, life views, different ways of approaching work and how that is going to play a role in uh, moving the work workplace and advancement and work and how that's going to change. So I'm... Um, I'm going to invite you to read this very quickly and tell me when do you think this was said? Last year, 10 years ago, 50 years ago? I see no hope for the future of our people if they're dependent on frivolous youth of today. For certainly all youth are reckless beyond words. What do you think? 150 years, okay, last century, 1960s, okay, there you go, <laughs> so 8th century BC, it's always been the case where an older generation thinks about the next generation as reckless, and they're not <laughs> responsible or accountable, less work ethics, and more, more about them, and about, you know, the different dinosaurs, yep, <laughs> Interesting. So let's start with humanize. So basically what I want you to kind of think about is that back in the day when you know, I was in college, the problem was finding good information, good knowledge, good content. It was like finding a needle in a haystack. You really want to dig and understand and find and quality information was were very almost like impossible to find or very expensive. Now back kind of moving forward in the early 2000s and 2010, it was like you can find really good information, but they were very expensive. So possible, but very expensive. Today, it's not about access anymore. Everybody has access. People have access to all research, they have access to best practices, they have access to YouTube. They pretty much everything is, is accessible. It's, a, it's not about content anymore. It's more about what you want, the signal and the noise. It's like finding a needle in a pile of needles. And this is where like you have, if you go and search for like leadership development on Google, you find millions of resources. Coaching, you have millions of resources. So how do I know this is the right signal for the right goal, for the right cause, for the right people, for the right task, right? It's just becoming really, really uh, hard to know what exactly you want and how you focus on. Overwhelming. So. The way I think about it is when you think about what do generations want, specifically this generation Z, we're talking about the basic human needs. Go back to the ABCs. The ABCs are autonomy, what we call self-determination theory. Autonomy, agency, sense of, you know, I can practice things. I want to do things. That's what everybody values. This is not, uh, you know, this is like agnostic to the generational uh, differences. It's just everybody wants the same thing. We all have the same human operating system. Autonomy, competence, sense of growth. That's why we work in learning and development and relatedness, sense of community, sense of belonging, sense of inclusion. The primary then, the primary uh, leadership development style is to be adaptive. The primary communication style is to be adaptive. The primary uh, uh, organizational work design is, has to be adaptive. Flexibility, we're talking about flexible workforce, flexible workplace, flexible work. It's all about flexibility, right? And the secondary, they want structure. They don't want too much, uh, you know, fluidity. They want looking for some stability, which is like transactional way if you think about management. So these together, if you have the best of both worlds, which is flexibility and stability, together you would have a really uh, intentional workplace for this workforce now and in the future. Let's see more data. So millennials on Gen Z see flexibility, the most critical employee characteristic for successful businesses. Number one, you can see here, this is like a recent study by Deloitte Global 2021 Millennial and Gen Z survey. And number one, you see here flexibility and adaptability. You see both of them, like not one of them, both of them. 
and creativity comes after technology savvy and you can see empathy critical thinking these are things that really they really care about now more if you see the adaptation or how generation z uh, and you see here 1997 so uh, you, different studies different different sources have different ways of defining a generation but let's say 1995 and after so from a recruiting, training, managing, and inspiring perspective, and how they interact with other generations. So on the left, you can see how uh, the same generation interacting with this generation as leaders versus employees. For example, a leader of a Gen Xer will focus on show how organization is different from others when he interacts or she interacts with Gen X. But when they interact with a, a Gen Zer, they use tech to communicate. So right now we see uh, technology used for onboarding, it's all mobile. Uh, we see technology used for uh, mobile technology for, for recruiting. We see more AI driven technology. So we can see that mentorship and coaching are really needed when you talk about different generations. So uh, this is by door leadership. One more about millennials at work, I find this really interesting, that what are the number three, what are the top three benefits that would value an employer? Like what are they looking for uh, from an employer perspective? And they found, like generation, they found that training and development is number one. So that's a good uh, business case here. Flexibility and then cash and bonuses and then private healthcare and all that. Because the top two perks are L&D or training and development then flexible work hours. Double-clicking on training and development, you can see here that working with strong coaches and mentors, 28% is the highest training and development opportunities that uh, th these generations actually value. So think about it as number one perk is training and development and number one most effective tool needed and people value Gen Y and Gen X are coaching and mentoring. That doesn't mean that others are not important, Again, we're talking about the and, not either or, but think about kind of how this actually drives your overall strategy in the workplace. So before we go to optimize, what, what do you think so far? What, what is happening? Any questions? All right. So maybe we have uh, an ask any question. Yeah, absolutely. Any questions? Maybe five more minutes and we wrap up and we go to more questions and answers. So here where I think is, think about the world in the future in the 202030. Again, the whole theme is that the world is happening right now. COVID and working from home and, and the migration and, and the kind of great resignation and all that really acceler accelerated this uh, shift. So we see, imagine this is by uh, PwC and how they see competing forces shaping 202030. So they think about it on a, on a scale from collectivism to individualism and from fragmentation to integration. And think about like if fragmentation and collectivism, think about the yellow world, humans come first. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but think about what kind of world you want to be in. Is that innovation rules or maybe human centered, maybe a green world where focusing on environment or focusing on the blue world, the corporate, corporate is king. We chose, <laughs> humans seek out greater meaning and relevance in what they do. Crowdfunding capital flows, uh, makers of new workers, right? So think about the future of work is actually human. So what future work where, of uh, future world of work will you belong to? So these are the final takeaways from today. Uh, time <laughs> too fast, but uh, think about it is from hypothesizing people-centered to humanize and optimize. We're talking about high well-being, high performance together. Think about the, uh, the what, the humanizing, motivation-based, personalized, adaptive, and think about leadership coaching as a lever. And last, think about the agile scaling, tech-enabled, platform-enabled, evidence-based, data-informed. Uh, what we say at the sounding board is more data-informed, not data-driven. Data uh, to still kind of focus on intuition and human experience. So with that, uh, this is the last thing I want to kind of share with you is again, back to mentee. I just want to see kind of any shift in your perspective. How are you feeling right now? And what kind of action you want to commit to? So if you can go to mentee, the same code here, not same code, there's different code to 
9575. I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay, and I'm going to go to Minty. Here we go. Right. So one word to describe your feeling right now. Let's see if uh, anything you want to feel. So I have a question here. So what, while you're typing, I'm, I'm having, I have a question by Carla. So she's saying, what is what you mean by uh, leadership container for coaching? Can you give uh, some examples? Absolutely. So when we you do coaching, you can do coaching in different ways, but one of the ways is to do coaching in directional and you focus on the client agenda and whatever they want to bring up to the conversation on a specific day, right? At the same time, uh, this might not be as aligned with the organizational needs. It could be only driven by the client agenda. So if you have a contract with, the, with, a, with a client and the client wants to up-level leadership within their organization, the conversation has to always be about leadership capabilities. You can, you have a, you have freedom, but also within a frame. And the frame is the container, which is leadership capabilities. So today, instead of asking the client or the coachee, what do you want to focus on? Or what are the most useful for you today? Think about what are the most useful for you that can advance this leadership capability that we're working on. I don't know if that, that answers your question. All right, motivated, thoughtful, reflective feeling. Uh, any more? Yeah, the size of the words. Can, so we see more people responding here. Any more, any, anything else? Yeah, let's move to another one. What is one takeaway you have from today's conversation? I encourage you to participate and remember the intention of today and how you want it to show up and how that informed your presence and curiosity. And what did you learn? What was your expectation? And did you get what you wanted to get today? I know it's uh, late for some of you. So uh, I understand you might be tired. <laughs> Thank you, Olivier. Thank you. Yeah, well, they said good presentations make you give you answers. Better ones or better conversations give you more questions. So if you have more questions and you're thinking even more, if your curiosity is, is you know, fueled, I, I personally feel like I achieved my mission. So it's the starter of the conversation. If you're really interested in more content, please reach out. And yeah, we definitely can continue this conversation. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I think I have two more minutes and I have only one more question. We can, uh, yeah, keep, keep them coming. Keep them coming. This is one more. All right. What is one action you can commit to today? You, you commit to taking immediately. This is probably my, the most important question. Insights without actions are not going to take you far. So think about one thing you want to do could be anything. It doesn't have to be a big action. The smaller, actually, the more likely it's going to happen. All right, great insight. Currently in the workforce. Nice, nice. See if we have more questions. Any questions, please feel free, feel free to ask, ask here. Sharing this information with colleagues. Yep, you can use some of the slides if you want to build a business case or a science case within your organization to convince leaders to talk the same language with them. I find it really interesting when you have a conversation with engineering leaders, how much they like the uh, statistical uh, analysis of some of the things, which, you know, expected, not all of them, not, not stereotyping here, 
but also I find it very interesting for other teams where they care about stories and they care about ROI and return on investment, which some teams are not necessarily interested at the same level. All right, the framing generation. Differences, exactly. It's more about life views and shared values. Yeah, yeah, coaching really matters. Actually, the word coach came from the, like a, means wagon in, the, in Latin and was used to actually, uh, till today, you know, in, in uh, airfare and, and uh, traveling. But the main goal is what we're not doing is that you're a coach. And I actually don't like the word, you're a coach. I like yeah, you, you're a human using coaching skills to advance learning and development for other humans. And I learned that from different people. And I kind of really want to think that we're all learning and development professionals who care, who, those who we are, we care about the growth of our organizations. We use coaching thoughtfully, leadership coaching, using technology thoughtfully. People are the platform, technology are just tools and how we together create this ecosystem for our employees. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here. Thank you so much for joining this presentation. I really, uh, appreciate it. I hope we can we can stay in touch. Appreciate it. Thank you, Iyad. We're at time, but I want to ask one question that came through in chat for you. Um, this one came from Mike, and he's just wondering if you could share what are the top two concerns talent leaders should address when it comes to future proofing the workforce. Absolutely. So number one, I would, I would, I would think about it this way. Uh, future workforce highly, highly values uh, conversations. Mm -hmm. So instead of assuming that what they want, I would try to find a creative way to keep asking them uh, in, a, in a meaningful way. What I mean by meaningful is that lead with actions. Uh, so you can build this trust and credibility and they know that if I answer a survey or engagement survey, pulse survey, whatever survey is, I know I can answer authentically, safely, but also I can answer and what my answer is gonna drive impact in the organization. Mm -hmm. So start with action, sig signal uh, commitment, then ask them, and then after that commit to three, I would say number three, just not more than three commitment per quarter. And this is gonna, First, better for your well-being as a learning and development professional, but also it's more likely to happen than committing to a lot of uh, a menu of, of, of uh, commitments. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing this great content being our last session. You're done really well and you're getting lots of, um, lots of praise here in the chat. So thank you for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and uh, wish you the best of your day or your week and your year. Goodbye. All right, everybody. And thanks to you all for joining us for today's training industry leader talk. And thanks to all of our dynamic speakers and to our sponsors, Sounding Board, Get Control, GP Strategies, Biz Library, and SAP Litmos. All of today's sessions are pre-qualified for credit hour by SHRM, HRCI, ISPI, and CPTM. I do hope you'll consider joining us for the annual training industry conference and expo happening once again in person this June 21st through 23rd in Raleigh, North Carolina. I would absolutely love to meet you there. Own your skills, discover new ones, and reconnect with your peers at TICE. Find out more at TICE2022.com. And the Certified Professional in Training Management Program provides a foundation of knowledge, skills, and applicable tools and decision models designed to facilitate strategic alignment between the training organization and the company's business goals. If you are ready to lead the change in transforming the business of learning, become a CPTM. Visit trainingindustry.com forward slash CPTM for more information. Once again, thanks so much for all of you for your time and attention throughout today's sessions. Until next time, I'm Elizabeth Parker, and I hope you all have a great day.